So good, we'll run it again. Um, hey, as you came in today, you saw sitting on the seat beside you or around you, uh, this little flyer here it has a QR code on it. You can uh, scan that. And we are, as a network, we're doing a 21-day devotional that we're just going to be journeying through starting tomorrow and navigating through as we go through this series. And, um, and so it's just, it's going to be on spiritual disciplines. It's going to be on the disciplines we're covering over these next four weeks, as well as just this journey of, you know, why they're important, how we're navigating this. And so super excited about this. It's online. Also, if you follow us on Facebook and social media, they're going to be posting each day. I know at least on Facebook, each day will pop up daily, and you can grab it there as well if you want to do it a day at a time. Um, I do not know if they were all taken. I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure. We did print off a small handful for uh, that are out there that are already pre-printed. And so if you desperately need one of those, let us know, and we can print it for you. You can also print it at home. It's a downloadable PDF, but if you need us to do that, we would love to, to help out. So we kicked, we kind of kicked off last week and we were talking about the important, you know, we start goals, start resolutions. We talked about these disciplines and what we're connecting into and what we're doing there. And the understanding is that all of this is through God. Like God is working, God is doing, there's nothing we can do to, uh, I mean, establish this. We're just being obedient and faithful as we're stepping in. So ultimately God working through us is the only way we change. The only way anything is different, the only way that we move towards him is through him working in, in us. With that said, today we are kicking off this discipline series with a topic that I will just tell you I did not grow up around. Um, I actually really struggled with how to start this. Um, I love telling stories. I like being funny. I, maybe I'm funny here in a minute. I talk about Bucky's. It's always a good time. But uh, it, it's I like those types of things. I like the engagement. But I just don't have... a I don't have a lot of background. I didn't grow up in churches that really uh, talked about this. Literally was talking to my mom yesterday uh, about this, and she's like, I just don't remember it. And, like, my mom's in her 70s, and, I, you know, and so this is, like, my whole life. And the topic we're talking about today is fasting. Maybe you are an immense faster, and you fast all the time, and it's something that you really do, and I'm telling you, you're going to be of a great value to a lot of people in this house and this family over the next few days and weeks and, and hopefully years as we lean into something that God calls us to, to step into. So we're going to do this in four parts today. Um, this, um, this kind of works through what is fasting, what does Jesus say about it, um, talk about some of the health side of it for a minute. I am not a doctor, did not say at a Holiday Inn Express last night, so you will want to talk to your real doctor before, unless it's ours, then you may not want to talk to him. Who knows what he'll say? He'd want us to fast for two years so we could be at our right weight, but uh, we, we have the same doctor, and he's very hard on us about being healthier, uh, which he should be, and, um, and, so, and then we're going to close out with um, some things that we can fast about the ideas that we can fast about, what we can fast around. And so ultimately, to kind of kick this off, uh, what is fasting? And so it'll be on the screen here. In its simplest form, fasting is refraining from food for spiritual purposes. There are conversations around whether or not like it functions more like Lent, that maybe you can just go in and if you give up something for a period in time, that that's fasting. And while I think that, that is, it can be very, very good, um, I've got a friend, he gives up coffee a couple times a year for about a week to show that he owns it. It doesn't own him. I have no clue why you would want to give up coffee ever, but maybe I should give it up for a week. But it's one of those things like he, he kind of steps away from coffee and does that um, just for that purpose. Um, a few years ago, Melissa and I did a 30-day, like, no, outs no media that was not focused at Jesus. So we wanted every everything we watched, listened to, for 30 days, um, we did a free trial of Pure Flix, and for thir the 30-day free trial, we watched lots of sermons, uh, a lot of really bad movies. There was some good ones in there as well. I wish The Chosen would have been around back then, and we could have binged that for 30 days. Um, it radically changed our life. I think we would both say that I, we are here right now because of what God did in those 30 days. He radically shaped and changed how we approach ministry, how we approach, I mean, family, everything. And it changed what, how we wanted to be involved in ministry that led to the space we're in right now. So I'm not saying there's not value in stepping away from something. If you've got something that owns you and you don't own it, if you've got something you're investing a ton of time into, most of us probably could uh, put social media on that for a minute or two that we might, if we given that up, would cause us... Um, 
struggles and stress and we think we're having a heart attack, then we might need to give it up for a few days just to let, it, let us own it, it not own us. But in that space, when I've researched and done, and you're welcome to come talk to me if you feel like I'm wrong on this, but the research, uh, the time I've spent, the commentaries, everything I have read is that a biblical fast is giving up um, food, giving up food for a spiritual purpose. And so it really leans into this one isolated thing that we talk about and, and, and we've used for years. And so I, here's the thing. I, I think that fasting is hard for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's hard because fast food. It's just easy to get things. It's so quick to grab stuff, and it's hard sometimes to just refrain from driving through and getting, you know, they used to be cheap. I guess they're like $1.99 now, but 99-cent burrito at Taco Bell, or you can grab a quick cheeseburger, or you can get your favorite thing just so quick, dropping in a Sonic and getting a, you know, Route 44 Coke with lime and an ice cream. That's my trigger, not yours, but, uh, I mean, it's just these things that you step into you can get. Um, you know, also, I mean, I joke about Bucky's, but man, I'm just telling you, like Bucky's is there. And when I go in, I am not looking to be fasting when I go to Bucky's. I will be there on Thursday and I am not looking to be fasting on Thursday. Lord willing, he does not call me to that between now and then. But, um, but we step into these things and I think there's something else. There's this been health craze of intermittent fasting where people do that. And I think it's really important. I think it's really good. But sometimes when we start to use words to connect them to something else, when we start to connect like intermittent fasting and fasting, we're going, oh, well, I'm doing this. So I'm fasting and I'm doing this thing here. And what's the purpose behind it? And while health is a part of, can be a part of fasting, what we're talking about is a very different thing. And how we step into that really challenges what we do when we start to fast. So what does Jesus say? We're not going to, I mean, it's, we're going to jump into the Sermon on the Mount. If you're in your Bible or you're on your app, whatever, Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18, they'll be up here on the screen uh, in just a minute. But we're going to look at these just three verses of what Jesus says and how he breaks this down. And so it says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I find it interesting. So Jesus is coming through the Sermon on the Mount here. He's just finished talking about prayer. He's teaching us how to pray, what we should say, how do we step into that. And then we, he leans into this space and he, he says these words, when you fast. So the thing that he's setting up is like, it's not something that's really an option here that we should be stepping into, that we should, we should do we do it, do we not? We should be fasting when you fast, when you do this. And the thing, and there was this whole like struggle with Jesus' disciples because Jesus' disciples weren't fasting because they were with Jesus. And John the Baptist's disciples and other people walking around, like, are your disciples too good to fast? What's going on with this? And Jesus tells them a little bit later, I mean, he tells, he just says, Why would you fast when the purpose of your fast is right here with you? And his disciples were gathered around him and they were there in that space and they were there in that moment. And so the fasting wasn't necessary for the 12 that were living with in that really close life with him. But once Jesus was gone, he had three real, three basic requirements for his people, for his disciples, people who want to be disciples of him, to give to the needy, to pray, and to fast. So Jesus set this like really simple following of, of what it's supposed to be for him. And I think that we talked about earlier, something that we do really well in our family here is we, we are generous. We have kids that have, I mean, it's, you know, I hadn't even thought about this till literally right now, like zero degree weather. And there are kids that had a Coke because of the generosity of the people in this room. That literally they had hoodies with no zippers. Uh, they made sure we wanted real hoodies. Uh, I mean, they had those things because of the generosity of people in this room. Give to the needy. It's something that, this, that, like I said, this room does really, really well. 
I think we pray. We're, we, we're even changing some things here because we value being able to pray with you and for you and come alongside. That's why I say, hey, write those prayer requests on, on the scan the QR code, write it on a connection card. Like we want to be able to pray and journey with you in life and what you're facing and what you're going through. But the fasting thing, maybe you grew up in a very different space than I did. But the vast majority of Christians that I know, rarely if ever, and it's just not something that's been crazy high on their radar because they never heard about it growing up. And when we read, we go, when, when you fast, got it, cool. But then we get caught up on the don't look somber. And that's what's funny is Jesus spends the next, the rest of those three verses saying, don't look like you're fasting. Stop walking around going, oh, I'm so hungry. I'm so like, oh, I'm fasting and I'm going. And I mean, it's like most of us, like fasting would be like, I'm going to eat three lasagnas and then I'm going to fast for an hour. And I think I can survive that hour if I do it that way. But the reality is God's calling us to something for a very specific purpose that drives us into communication with him in a way that is so different and so unique. I think it's John Wesley that said, the greatest way to enhance your prayer life is to add fasting. The struggle for us so many times when we're stepping into our prayer life is that we're in this isolated lane. And I'm not saying we need to fast every day, all day. We can't. It's not physically possible. But this part of what we're doing and then how we step in and how we approach it is so important and critical to what we do. So there's two things I want to talk about here as we kind of move towards the end of this thing. The first is the health side. And again, please, I am, I am not a doctor, but like it, it, there's some, just as I read a bunch and I looked at a lot of different things, I've, I've got friends that, like I've got one friend that he, he'll do fast occasionally. And I have one church I worked for that like we fasted and, and I'm, I'm not going to say where, and it's not important. I'm not trying to brag on anything because I was terrible at it when I started. The first time that we were going to fast, I just moved there and we were getting ready to fast for this big um, kind of event moment that we were going to have inside of our church there. And, and we were like, hey, we're going to fast. And most people are going to fast from like one to three days. And I'm like, <laughs> I am the holiest person I know. I am not. But I was like, I'll do 10. And I mean, what a moron. And, uh, and so I was like, I will do 10 days. I made it like a day and a half. And... Um, and, and the reality is, is there is a, there's some steps and there's some processes that I think some of you all, like I know friends that are so disciplined that like they can drive by anything in the world. Uh, and, and it's, it's impressive. I, I've got, I'm thinking a couple people off the top of my head, like if, if they're like, I'm not going to eat this. And they, somebody sat it on the table and said, this is free. They'd be like, nope, their favorite food in the world. And they just walk away from it. It would not matter what is happening. You put a pepperoni pineapple pizza in front of me and I'm eating the entire thing right then and no matter what I have committed to because I just that food is like not my it's like, it's like it can have a hold on me a little bit and so I got into this thing and I started to learn what it meant and as we went I started to fast and even sometimes just for a meal and some things it changed so much I've got one friend he at that same church where I met him and he helped me a lot with fasting but he had done a few 40-day fasts. And at the end, he'd be like, you know, and I have some lasagna. I was like, really, how much? He's like, a whole one. And he's like, my wife would make me a lasagna and I would eat the whole thing when the fast was over. And I was like, oh, so you weren't really like hoping to keep any weight off. He's like, nope, happiest fat man you will ever meet. I am so good right here. And so he would do those, but he was so committed to that. And so here's a couple of things that I wanna say inside of the health space. One, there is a step that if you have, if you're pregnant, you probably should talk to your doctor. If you have diabetes, serious health issues, I would talk to your doctor and figure out what that is. Um, what's a, a step for you? An option might be if there are some health issues, like, hey doc, can I miss a meal? Can I eat a snack? Can I take four to six hours? And can I then step back in? Again, I'm not a doctor. I don't want to speak to that. To the rest of us, that it's just an effort issue. There's something there. There's some things that for a day, most of us could probably do that. It's 24 hours. I promise you, I'm not going to wither away. I will be fine at the end of that. It is hard. And the goal of the hunger, the goal of the pains, the stomach growling, the maybe a small headache or something that comes in that space is that reminder 
that we are fasting towards something. And I'm going to talk about some things we can fast towards here as we, as we finish up in a minute. Um, if, as you go into maybe a two or three day fast, eating some fruit and vegetables for a couple of days, it helps with the stomach. It helps with some things that are, you're going to face when you've not eaten for a couple of days as you start to get into this. Um, if, you, if you're first starting this out, maybe you do from lunch one day to lunch the next day, and you start out with a juice and water fast, like clean juices um, and, and some things. It's just there's these steps, and there's some processes, and there, I, don't, I don't know how to tell you. Forty days is a long time. Um, you, you can live. Jesus did it, and <clears throat> he was human. I've got friends that have done it, but I have not, and uh, that's a long time, and I'm not sure how, you know, man, that's, that's impressive, but... I think that this moment of being able to step into these things, understanding the health side of it, there's some books that you can read. You're welcome to reach out to me. I've spent a lot of time over the last few weeks looking at this to be able to, to kind of understand why and how and what we do here. But the thing that I want to do as we kind of finish up today is this. You'll see this on the screen. None of the purposes is to earn God's favor. None of the purposes of fasting is to earn God's favor. It's useless to fast as a way to impress God and earn his acceptance. Faith in the work of Jesus Christ makes us acceptable to God, not our efforts, regardless of their intensity or sincerity. When you think about the fact, you give up something that you need, something that's important, something that you use every day, and you give that up. I mean, food is definitely something God created and gave us to help sustain and, and, you know, give us energy and give us strength. And you give that up. I mean, it can be intense. And it can be extremely sincere. But regardless of the sincerity, regardless of the intensity, there's nothing we can do in that space that causes us to earn more favor with God. Because through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we gained all the favor we'll ever need or that we can ever attain. God has worked in that space, in that moment, to give you everything you need. So when we step away from something like food for a period of time and fasting, we're saying to God, I'm giving up something that is important to my life, it's necessary, to hear from you. And here are 10, ten ways. I'm going to give 10 things. They're going to pop up on the screen. I'll, I was told I went to touch fast at the end. I'll try and go slower. If you're writing these down, type them into your phone. Um, as I was reading and, and just looking through this, someone had taken all the instances of um, fasting in the Bible and put them in these 10 categories. So I'm not saying this is perfect. I'm not saying it's exhaustive. But I'm saying this is just a way that you can start and I can start to look at this as we go in. These aren't in any specific order either, but, you know, the first one up here is to strengthen prayer. I mentioned earlier, you know, fasting is one of the best friends we can introduce to our prayer lives. When we, st- when we are praying and we're seeking God and we have things that we're stepping away from in an effort to focus on him, it drives us to be more intent, to be more intentional, be more focused about what we're saying and why we're there and earnest in our, our plea to him inside of those spaces. The second thing is to seek God's guidance. Fasting doesn't ensure the certainty of receiving everything we're asking for. However, it does make us more receptive to the one who loves to guide us. I think the the struggle sometimes is, is like when we step in, even when we just pray, forget adding something as intense as fasting. When we pray, like, God's going to answer, God's going to answer, God's going to answer, God's going to answer. And when we don't get the answers, we get, we get a tense, we tend to get a bit frustrated. But I love how this quote was said. It's just, it, it makes us more receptive to the one who loves to guide us. Maybe God's wanting to give you something different than you started fasting for. Maybe he's wanting to challenge you and grow you in something different than what you're praying about. And as we step in and we do this, seeking God's guidance is one way. Third way is to express grief. Three of the first four references to fasting in the Bible are connected to grief. When you're hurting, when friends are hurting, when people around you, when your life is facing something that's hard and it's grief, it's a moment that we can step away from something that's important to us and we kind of sacrifice that and in those prayers and we fast and pray towards God. 
and he speaks and he works inside of those moments. A fourth thing is to seek deliverance or protection. One of the most common fasts in biblical times was for deliverance or protection from enemies or circumstances. I know most of us aren't facing like physical wars. For those of you who are in the military that suit up and, and go into that space, firefighters, EMTs, and you run into buildings that the rest of us are running away from, thank you. Uh, but most of us aren't, like in biblical times, our town isn't, isn't going to be overrun tonight. We're, we're not, most of us probably lock our doors, but we're, we're not staying up all night nervous and got seven security alarms running so that we can be sure we're safe. But we know inside of so many things in people's lives, the enemy comes in a very different way than actual physical war. But the Bible says we are in spiritual warfare. We forget that part of it sometimes. So while the battle may not be something that physically we see in front of us and the enemy is directly there, we're facing enemies and circumstances that don't make sense. And God has given us a battle plan a way that we can step in to begin to seek him, to pray, and to fast, to see clearly his guidance and how to move through this. A fifth thing is to express repentance and return to God. This repentance is a change of mind resulting in a change of actions. Fasting can represent more than just grief over sin. It can, all, it can signal a commitment to obedience in a new direction. Repentance for the things that we've done. Returning to God. Some of these things I believe we take lightly. We've just become so American Christianized that we feel like we can just step in and be like, God, my bad. And we walk on and it's like God's just going, thou art forgiven, my son. And, and, and yes, he does. There's got to be a touch more of a sincerity. There's actually got to be, you know, my wife's always told our boys, saying you're sorry means you won't do it again. And most of us don't finish the prayer before we're doing it again. The repentance and return to God. What if we started fasting in a space where we really saw a hurt, where we saw we were hurting the heart of God? And our repentance and our return to him came through prayer and fasting for a time. to humble oneself before God. Remember this, that fasting itself is not humility before God, but should be an expression of humility. Fasting itself isn't humility. It's an expression where we humbly in that space express humility to God for what he does for us, and we're asking him and pleading to him and beckoning to him to work in a situation today. Seventh thing is to express concern for the work of God. A Christian might feel compelled to fast and pray for the work of God in a place that has experienced tragedy, disappointment, or apparent defeat. Now, I was just saw Justin and some of the guys and see Jeremy here here now. You know, maybe as a church, as the next Honduras trip happens, maybe a day a week for a month heading into that, with a space where there's huge needs, needs for the gospel. There's physical needs, emotional needs. And we've got so many great opportunities that we've seen God do through what he's, what he's in that space where eye clinics and, and so many things have been created to give hope into the immediate needs that are there. And we have a pastor who lives there and other staff that we get to see through that space that's making a difference and, and, and the spiritual needs are being met. But what if as a body, what if as a family, what if as a house we stepped in and maybe one day a week, even if it was just a meal, that we all fasted at the same time, praying for the same purpose, for the same end, for the same end result of God being made big while our friends are spending seven to 10 days in Honduras serving the people who live there. What if the needs that are there, that we prayed that God somehow would miraculously step in and provide that? 
people, I, I have ideas all the time. People be like, man, that'd be expensive. I'm like, it's just money. God's got a cattle on a thousand hills. Let him sell a cow. I, I don't know exactly how to say what's going to happen, but we spend so much time going, I make $100 a week, and if I spend 72 of it, and then this goes here and this goes here, I don't have enough money to do this really crazy idea that I feel like God's put on my heart. And God's saying, I don't need you to have the money. I need you to be obedient. I'm not saying go get in debt. I'm not saying do anything crazy. But I'm saying you can step into some things and start where you are and God can work. And we've got needs in Honduras right now that I know we could pray and God could meet and do. Because there's people who have the resources that it would it'd be like us pulling out and handing $10 to somebody. And they could write a $100,000 check and never even blink. And they want to serve. They want to help. We just haven't prayed for God to bring them in in the way. We haven't partnered with Jeremy and his team in the way that maybe we should in some of those things. Some of y'all have. Maybe all of us have. Last three things. To minister to the needs of others. I think we kind of addressed some of that there. I think I got a little ahead of myself. But ministering to the needs of others is a way that we can fast and ask God to work. Number nine, to overcome temptation and dedicate yourself to God. What are you, what are you tempted by? What's, what's the struggle you're bumping up against? What's the thing that you need God to deliver you from that fasting and praying would work? And number 10, to express love and worship God. I don't know, it seems kind of silly, but you know, you, how, how does your spouse feel most loved when you, I mean, when you express love, think about the way that you do that, that, that they know that you, they, they, it makes them feel differently. They love when you share that way, when you express love in that way. What if the creator of the universe, we occasionally took a minute and we fasted and, we in and expressed love and gratitude and worshiped him? What if there was nothing that we were looking to get on the other side of fasting and praying? and to honor God, tell him we love him, and just express us. As the band's coming back up, we're going to finish up today. Spiritual disciplines are hard um, for me. We talked about this a little bit. So some of you guys are like, y'all are amazing, and you're so focused, and you're so intentional, and <clears throat> and I think some of you all are like me and you, you, you're really working and you're trying and, and you're, you're, you're getting God's sanctification is daily growing you and, and you're moving in those spaces. And as we ended 2022, there was some things that, that God started doing and it was kind of interesting how he would pull, me, you know, I would have an idea and something God he was putting in my heart and Gary would call me and it would just be this thing. It's like, oh, hey, hey, we need to step into that. We need to do this. And uh, Noah and I worked together and, and he would be like, hey, you know, here's some things that's going on in my heart and mind. And I'm going, man, that's crazy. I've been thinking some of these same things. And um, Jeremy would, would come, or Justin, I mean, sorry, would come up to me. He's one of our deacons. And he would just say, you know, Robert, God's been saying this. And I'm going, that is crazy. And and all of it really came around, how do we love and care for our community? How do, we love, how do we love our house? How do we love and care for the people in here that show up? Um, because what I know is you, some of you are hurting today. Um, you're, you're struggling. You're going through some things. There's some bumps that aren't the easiest thing in life for you. Um, Some of us, like all of us care. Like You wouldn't show up here and not at least be somewhat interested in other people hearing about Jesus. And so we care about Irwin. We care about Unicoi County. We care about the people we work with. We care about the people that we walk along the road beside, the people we maybe literally bump into at Walmart. It's those buggies and those aisles keep getting smaller and we're just running into each other as we're going down. And after we end up yelling, we're going, God, you, you might want us to pray for them. And, and so maybe it was a an ordained bump uh, that we had there. And, and we go through these spaces and we get in. And so I have no clue 
what you think about fasting. I don't know if you think it's like the seventh level of a Harry Potter book that is something really weird that's going, I have no clue what all this means. I know Jesus talks about it and God talks about it and it's all throughout the Bible, but man, it is weird to think about not eating a meal for this purpose. Um, this is my challenge. There's three or four different types of fasts. And while it says do this in private, there is an individual private fast. There's also a corporate fast that is talked about in Scripture where believers came together and they fasted and prayed very specifically for something that God is wanting to do. They wanted God to do. They wanted to see Him work. They saw a need that needed to be met. So my request is going to be this. On Wednesday, maybe all you can do is lunch. Maybe you can do the whole day. Maybe you're a power faster and you're going to do Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and be like, I'll show Robert. And uh, you go, you can teach me how to get there. But uh, on Wednesdays, I would love for all of us For God to, to give us this, the opportunity, to give us the bandwidth, to give us the will, the passion to reach, to love, to care for, to our friends and our family here in Irwin. And I know that's a really small demographic. I just talked about Honduras, and you're going, why don't we pray for that? We will. But today, just for these Wednesdays left in January, I'm not asking for the rest of the year. If it's something you feel like you want to do, then you can do a private individual fast and you can lean into that. But I just want to ask on Wednesdays, if you're willing to join in, you figure out a fast that works for you and food. Maybe you can't go the whole day without. Maybe it's a juice fast for you. Maybe it's a, the Daniel fast that people talk about. and It's kind of some nuts and things that you work through that. And if you've got questions, again, I'm not a doctor, but... I use Google. And we'll find a couple of fasts that work that help out. I believe 2023 is a year that our, man, I believe it's a year that God's wanting to do something through our family here. I believe he's wanting to do something huge. And I think it starts with us being obedient to the things in scripture that we see, that we know we should step into. Let me pray. God, thank you. Thank you that as we're about to sing, you are a wonder-working God. Because you love, the miracles, salvation, things you have done for us are too good to not believe. And I would just say selfishly, even having, having experienced the work of fasting and, and seeing you work inside of partnering in that with friends and a church and, and navigating some things, I have not been as faithful in that space as I should have been. So God, what, I'm, what we're doing is, is we're just leaning in and we're saying as 2023 is here, as we're walking through these days, as we're moving into this, this moment, we're asking you to create divine conversations. We're asking you for the friends that we've been praying for who need you, that you soften their hearts asking for our friends who are hurting, who are in sin, who are, who are struggling through things that we are praying for. We're asking that you turn. You turn them back to you. God, for our friends who are sick, we're asking that you make yourself seen and known through healing. And God, as we step in, 
together, fasting, praying, seeking. What we're, all, all we want to see is your name made big as we are obedient in these steps that you've given us. So let us, let us be faithful. Let us be obedient. And let us be the change. Let us be the difference. God, that you have called us to be. I pray that you may be.